Hello everyone, you join me in sunny Kremlin, Colorado. I'm Max without a spec guide and today is very exciting because this site has just been upgraded to have the Magic Dock. Now, if you're watching this channel, you may be asking, what the heck is that, Max? Well, you might have heard Tesla's partnering with several vehicle makers to uh, put the Tesla charging port in their cars and even sell their customers an adapter next year so they can use Tesla chargers on their non-Tesla cars. But what if I told you that today already you can charge any non-Tesla car, um, as long as your car has a CCS port, which is most electric cars besides the Nissan Leaf, you can charge all of them today at search and Tesla supercharger sites that have an adapter built in already. This is the Magic Dock system. We've heard about it earlier this year. Those of you who, who are EV nerds will uh, be up to date with it. Uh, we, you know, there were installations of the sites early on in New York and California. At first, it was like 12 or 13, but. In the last few days, we've seen several of these sites come online in Alaska, in uh, Canada, in Washington, in Moab, Utah, fulfilling a major pain point for existing drivers of non-Tesla cars, helping link stuff for them. Uh, and we saw this site come on in Kremlin, Colorado, which wasn't too far from where I live. So of course I drove here and I'm here today to show you how it works. So for any of the Tesla supercharging sites, this video is gonna be how to find one, which ones are online, which ones you can go to, and then how to actually use them with your non-Tesla car. All right, so the first step is to find which superchargers actually support this, and it's not all of them. So go to the Tesla website, tesla.com slash find hyphen US, I'll link in the description, but you can see with a filter which superchargers are available to CCS, aka non-Tesla vehicles in the US. You can also look at this in the Tesla app. So while you're at the Tesla website, by the way, make an account with them if you don't have one already, because you're gonna need to do that. So you'll make a Tesla account, then on your smartphone of choice, be it an Android or an iPhone, you're gonna download the Tesla app from the App Store. Once you've downloaded the Tesla app from the App Store and you have a Tesla account, you open the Tesla app and you sign in and now you're ready to go. So I'll show you on screen what's going on. Let's open the Tesla app that we're signed into and there should be a prominent, uh, basically, uh, prompt for charge my non-Tesla car because you don't have a Tesla registered yet and you have the Tesla app. So you're gonna see that very prominently. We're gonna hit that option. And then we're gonna hit that option and assuming we go to that site and it's nearby us, it should pop up on you know nearby chargers available to my car. Uh, you're gonna select the site and then right, the site will have present itself. Uh, and then you're gonna be able to see the post of the site, uh, basically the number. So this one here is 1C where I parked. Um, but yeah, find the one where you park and know, by the way, where the charge port in your vehicle is. So when you pull up to one of these and you park, you have to make sure you get your charge port as close as possible to the charger because uh, these cables are infamously very short. Tesla has added the adapter solution in here, but they haven't made the cables really much longer. So what you're gonna have to do is you're gonna have to uh, use the uh, parking to the best of your ability. Please try to park straight. Don't park sideways uh, if you can avoid it. Some vehicles like the Ford F-150 Lightning because of where they put their charge port and their size, it's gonna be a little awkward, but do the best job you can. Um, and I would say, unfortunately, right now with Lightnings and vehicles that are large and have charge ports in different places, it's gonna be high tension at Tesla super supercharging sites if they're you know, crowded and you're trying to pull up with your vehicle and take up two spots. Do the best you can. Luckily in my Polestar, fairly similar charge location than Tesla. I have my charge port here, so it's very easy for me to, to just back into the site, and now I'm here. I could actually back in a little bit more. I think I have barely enough cable clearance, but yeah, get as close to the cable as you can, and like I said, note the number. So this one right here is one seat. Now in the app, we're gonna go select that number, and there we're gonna hit uh, unlock to start charging. We may, if this is our first time right using it, have to add a payment method. So feel, you know, whip out your credit card, punch in your credit card, save it with a Tesla app. That's what you have to do right now because unfortunately there's no card readers or other forms of billing on these superchargers. But basically, enter in your details. You're gonna be billed about, uh, well, it actually depends. At this site right now, it's like 48 cents a kilowatt hour. Uh, it depends on where your supercharger is and what time you are charging. If you are a member though, and you pay Tesla $12 a month, if this is something you imagine using regularly, then you get a discounted kilowatt hour rate. Uh, the kilowatt hour rate is that 
unit of energy capacity. You've seen it build similarly if you've charged Electrify America, ChargePoint, others. Tesla uh, tends to be actually pretty competitive on price, but sometimes they're more expensive. But if you charge at like after midnight or you know weird times, then sometimes it can be cheaper because they utilize dynamic pricing. Anyhow, long story short, once you're ready, you added your payment info. You uh, you're gonna hit unlock. Uh, you're gonna hit the button. I'll, it's blue. I'll show it on screen. I believe it says unlock the uh, the cable, and it's gonna unlock, and then you'll be able to push this out. So I'll see you in the next clip where I actually do that and demonstrate it, plugging in. To my car. Adapter is unlocked and you can see where it uh, basically lives in this uh, cradle here. So when it's ready in the app, it says basically, you know, release the adapter. You actually have to push in and then out comes a big chunky CCS type one adapter built into this uh, Tesla supercharger. It's locked onto here, so don't try to take it. Uh, but yeah, you can then of course open the DC charging pins on your vehicle and then you can just plug this guy in and uh, make sure you park accordingly because these cables are infamously very short, just long enough for Tesla drivers, but for lots of vehicles, depending on where your charge port is, they might not reach. But if you park the right way, it should communicate. Uh, in my car, it's green. Looks like it just clicked, contactors are connecting, and I'm gonna start a charge session, uh, charging my Polestar 2 on a Tesla supercharger. Isn't that cool? When it's time to stop charging or you're done, you reach your charging limit, uh, you charge to what you need, you're going to be going in the Tesla app and clicking stop charge. Uh, and then it's gonna let you know that you can basically release the handle from your car. First, you're gonna need to press this button uh, to unlock it. And now we should be able to just pull out the uh, adapter and the cable wholesale. We will turn them to the pub because we wanna be good people, uh, leave them there and lock those uh, so that we're not responsible for any idle fees, of course, for leaving charging equipment unattended or just, you know, being bad people. We wanna leave this equipment in good shape. So return it to where it belongs. And then of course, safely close the DC charging pins and the charge store to your vehicle. And you should be go to go, simple as that. We have, wow, charged a non-Tesla at a Tesla supercharging site, wild times. And when you're done charging, like a Tesla or a non-Tesla, doesn't matter what car you have, please park somewhere else and don't hog the chargers so that other people can use them. And that is basically how to charge a non-Tesla right now at a Tesla supercharging site with the Magic Dock. Super interesting option. And uh, I think it's great to have more flexibility. Initially, we thought these sites were gonna be very limited and there weren't gonna be that many of them because of course the future is gonna be uh, Tesla selling adapters to people for their cars right now. And the long-term future is gonna be all the cars in North America having the Tesla port baked in so we don't have to deal with this. But this is where we are at the moment. And I think it's a great stopgap. It's filling in some crucial EV routes for people uh, that you know otherwise wouldn't be possible. We're seeing in Washington and Utah, places like that already. Tesla is choosing very interesting sites for this. Uh, so again, not every supercharger by any stretch. It's really, I think, like fewer than 20 right now, but it's expanding rapidly. A lot of them are coming online. A lot of this has to do with very recent state funding. Uh, but this is all so exciting, and I'm just gonna you know, urge that as you explore this world as a non-Tesla driver, that you stay courteous. Uh, if you're a Tesla driver too, stay courteous to your friends and neighbors who are charging their non-Teslas. Let's all be nice to each other, get along, coexist, and uh, charge happily. And uh, hopefully over time, some of the issues like billing being kind of awkward, right, as I showed you with that tutorial, it's a little bit awkward right now for non-Tesla drivers. Um, we can have, add card readers, we can add longer cables, we can make sure these charging stations give vehicles like the Hyundai Ioniq 5 and the Lucid Air their full charge speed, which by the way, now they won't. I have another video on this channel coming on some of the shortcomings of Tesla superchargers right now for non-Tesla vehicles. But the fact that it's here at all and it works is so cool. I think it's awesome. I've been Max without a spec guide. Uh, and uh, thanks for watching this tutorial. If it's helped you, feel free to subscribe to our channel. Check out all of our EV content for how to get started with your EV, be it a Tesla or not a Tesla. And uh, thanks so much. See you in the next one. Bye.